Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Bitter Pill, the show where we talk about bitter pills of truth that people don't want to swallow and the corporate media doesn't want you to hear about. Uh, so today I wanted to talk some more about uh, exit polling and what it can tell us about uh, our elections and their integrity. Um, <clears throat> so last time what I showed you was that uh, there was a, a significant discrepancy between the outcome for uh, Biden in terms of uh, vote totals versus uh, what the exit polls would lead us to expect as far as how he did and uh, the numbers for Trump where basically Biden that's uh, the number one here uh, underperformed the exit polls by about minus 1.4 percent whereas Trump overperformed the exit polls by about 2.3 percent and basically uh, if uh, I mean whether or not you watch that show I'll just uh, remind you the exit polls uh, uh, would lead us to believe that Biden would win uh, the election by 6.4 percent um, Biden actually won the election by about 4.5 percent a little under 4.5 percent uh, so you know, as we discussed last time, or as I talked about last time, uh, you know, all these claims you hear from Trump and his supporters that uh, Biden won the election because the Democrats rigged it in his favor, uh, at least in terms of the um, you know, uh, how the votes were counted, uh, that doesn't seem to be true. Um, And that's not to say that there couldn't have been isolated cases of uh, meddling uh, by folks responsible for counting the votes, uh, but uh, you know, if anything, there was much more of that by uh, Republicans than by uh, Democrats. Um, and I also talked last time about how uh, there have, ever since... 2000, maybe before then, but definitely since uh, starting in the 2000 general election where uh, Republican election officials in the state of Florida uh, rigged the outcome for George Bush, uh, resulting in his uh, winning the Electoral College based on the um, decisive state of Florida, where they uh, disenfranchised tens of thousands of predominantly African-American voters who tend to vote Democratic. And so that's the main reason why uh, Bush won that state. But there was also uh, talk at the time, and has been since then, of uh, you know, rigging in terms of how the votes were actually counted. So um, I, I misspoke a bit last time uh, in suggesting that uh, this uh, discrepancy was... Uh, mainly because of uh, voter suppression. Uh, in fact, uh, if you actually prevent somebody from voting altogether, so you, uh, you strip their name off of the registration list and they don't have the opportunity to correct that so that they can vote, um, you know, they're not going to report to an exit pollster, oh, I voted for um, Al Gore or I voted for Joe Biden or you know whoever uh, because they didn't get to vote at all. Um, however, there are also cases where um, you know, uh, computer software is meddled with so that the uh, vote counts are rigged. Uh, you know that's certainly possible, and there's uh, evidence in terms of discrepancies between computer vote counts and uh, uh, vote counts for hand counted. Uh, ballots. So, for example, uh, Hillary Clinton in the 2016 primaries uh, uh, did better uh, compared to Bernie Sanders in states where the votes were counted by computer or in precincts where the votes were counted by computer than in places where the votes were hand counted you know, paper ballots. Uh, and there's also a lot of cases where people think they 
voted for a candidate, but you know, maybe they got a provisional ballot. So, uh, you know, because it, like maybe they didn't meet all the qualifications or supposedly didn't for um, you know, being allowed to vote. And then uh, they said, here's a provisional ballot, vote on this, and we'll check into uh, your uh, registration information. And uh, if it checks out, then we'll count your vote. Um, and most of those don't actually get counted. So that's one way that uh, people who thought they voted for a candidate uh, didn't actually have their vote counted for that candidate. Um, and there have also been cases, uh, for example, in Florida, uh, in Debbie, Debbie Wasserman, Wasserman Schultz's district, uh, as well as in Detroit uh, during the 2016 presidential election. Uh, Wasserman Schultz, uh, if you don't know, is a uh, congressperson uh, in a, a district in South Florida uh, around Broward County. And uh, yeah, there's little doubt that uh, in several elections that she's been involved in have been rigged in her favor. Uh, uh, in some cases, uh, massive numbers of votes were simply thrown in the tr ballots were simply thrown in the trash and not counted. Um, so, you know, certainly voter suppression could play a role in this difference between how Biden did relative to his uh, predicted performance by the polls and how Trump did uh, much better than the polls predicted he would, 2.3% uh, better. Uh, you know, some of that's voter suppression. Uh, you know, some of that may be um, you know, rigging. Uh, you know, it could be that there's some polling error too, but uh, you know, exit polls are typically pretty accurate. So. For example, in most countries where exit polls are done, uh, they generally predict the results of elections, uh, or post-dict, I guess you should say, uh, pretty darn accurately, because exit polls typically have huge samples. So, for example, in uh, this past election, uh, uh, general election of 2020, uh, they sampled about 20,000 people, about 15,000 in person as they were leaving the polls, and about 5,000 over the phone in cases where they were absentee voters or they'd voted early and they hadn't had a chance to um, you know, encounter them <coughs> outside the polling place. Um, so massive samples, and they do a pretty good job of uh, matching up the sample to the demographics of the population. Uh, so exit polls tend to do a pretty good job. So for example, in uh, uh, the 2016 Republican primaries, uh, the exit polls were very accurate. Um, not so for the exit polls uh, in this election. Uh, as I talked about last time, and also, if we look at the uh, elections from this spring, the Democratic primaries, exit polls were done in uh, eight states. Um, and, you know, of course, there were more candidates than Biden and Sanders uh, listed on the ballot, uh, but uh, almost all of them dropped out fairly early. The only uh, three candidates who stayed in for um, more than the first few primary states were uh, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Tulsi Gabbard, and uh, Gabbard dropped out, I think it was in, like, mid-March. Um, and then Sanders, of course, uh, quit early himself, you know, dropping out in early April, um, you know, disappointing a lot of his supporters. Uh, so, uh, you know, perhaps because the uh, primaries uh, concluded early in terms of competitive uh, race, races, uh, um, there were only eight states where exit polls were done. Uh, but even though it was only eight states where exit polls were done. Uh, I did the same thing I did with the uh, Biden versus Trump data, and I uh, entered both the exit poll uh, numbers for both Biden and Sanders, uh, and the uh, vote totals for uh, Biden, or vote percentages, I should say, for Biden as well as for Sanders in each of those eight states, and computed the difference uh, for each candidate between uh, 
how they did and how they were expected to do based on the exit poll numbers. And then I statistically analyzed uh, those differences. And just as I found that Trump overperformed and Biden underperformed uh, relative to the exit polls in the uh, general election this fall, uh, Biden massively overperformed uh, and Sanders underperformed uh, the exit polls in the eight states where exit polls were done. Uh, so Biden uh, beat the exit poll numbers by an average of 2.9 percent, you know, across those eight states on average. Uh, Sanders massively underperformed uh, you know, the exit polls by an average of 3.6%. Uh, uh, um, and, you know, it was actually the state of Vermont where Sanders had one of his, uh, excuse me, where, where is it uh, for Sanders? Uh, one, two, three, four, let's see. Uh, yeah, Sanders, uh, you know, didn't do nearly as well in Vermont, and uh, Biden did much better in Vermont relative to uh, how the exit polls uh, predicted they would do. Um, and you know, in any case, uh, overall, uh, massive difference in uh, performance compared to the exit polls. Uh, you know the drill from last time. This number here, F, uh, if it's a big number, that means that uh, it's highly unlikely that this difference uh, between you know, the average uh, score in one group and the average score in the other group uh, could have happened by chance. Uh, probability value P of less than 0.001 means that there's less than a 1 in 1,000 chance that this difference right here between how Biden did relative to the exit polls massively overperforming uh, compared to what polls uh, would lead us to expect and Sanders massively underperforming compared to what the polls uh, set, said as far as how many votes he would get. Uh, and these numbers over here are uh, different ways of calculating effect sizes. The effect size is a number on a scale from 0 to 1 indicating how much of the variation in the numbers is due to uh, the effect you're looking at. Um, so in this case uh, more than two-thirds of the variation in uh, the numbers that we're looking at here uh, observed uh, vote uh, percentages in, in each of those eight states for each of the two candidates we looked at uh, and you know, poll predictions, exit poll predictions uh, for those eight states for each of the candidates. Um, you know, that's you know the majority of the variation in the numbers being accounted for by the fact that Biden beat the pants off of his expected uh, vote performance and uh, Sanders massively underperformed uh, what the polls said would be the outcome. Uh, so you know, what that suggests is just as uh, you know, the results for the general election suggest that uh, Republicans uh, were able to you know, game the election uh, count the vote counts uh, in Trump's favor, but you know, it wasn't anywhere near enough uh, for Trump to win, you know, to steal the election. Um, likewise, uh, you know, some Democratic. Uh, election officials, thumbs were put on the scale uh, in favor of Joe Biden and against Bernie Sanders in uh, the Democratic primaries this year. Uh, you know, lots of possible uh, reasons why that, uh, how that came about, lots of possible things they did. Uh, you know, we don't know for sure uh, all of the things they did. Um, <coughs> certainly one thing that happened was that, uh, you know, a lot of people simply didn't get to vote. Uh, either they were thrown off of registration lists. Uh, we don't know for sure about the Democratic uh, primaries uh, this time, as far as uh, you know, uh, Democratic leaning elect or you know, centrist corporate Democratic leaning election officials, uh, you know, uh, rigging you know, that aspect of the uh, system. Um, we do know from last time, uh, you know, in 
uh, Brooklyn, New York, for example, um, a couple hundred thousand uh, independents who tried to re-register as Democrats so they could vote in the uh, New York Democratic primary. You know, it's a closed primary, so you have to be registered as a Democrat to vote in the Democratic primary there. Um, you know, and lots of people who try to re-register as Democrats, uh, you know, wound up not actually getting re-registered as Democrats for various reasons. Uh, many people, for example, were uh, apparently deliberately uh, registered uh, for the uh, wrong party, um, or you know, the, their you know, information was lost and then they found out too late to do anything about it or you know, something like that, quote-unquote lost. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, you know, that could have happened in this year's uh, election, uh, uh, primary election, but we do know that uh, they clo closed a lot of polling places, which made it harder for people to have time to uh, you know, stand in line and vote if they were voting in person. Um, you know, uh, it's certainly possible that ballots were thrown out or uh, you know, voting machines were rigged to skew the results. Um, <coughs> But uh, you know, as far as uh, people being thrown off the registration lists, you know, as, as I was saying earlier, uh, that's probably not uh, what's mainly accounting for this difference because, uh, you know, if people you know, simply can't vote, uh, then they're not going to tell a pollster, oh, I voted for Sanders or I voted for Biden because you know, they didn't get to vote. Uh, but, you know, there's lots of other... Um, election rigging mechanisms that could account for this. Okay, well, let's look at some other election results. Let's go back to 2016. You think the Republicans cheated on Trump's hat behalf to help him beat Hillary Clinton? I mean, even if you don't like Hillary Clinton, which I certainly didn't, I didn't vote for her, I voted for Jill Stein, um, and, you know, fuck all the people who claim that um, Jill Stein uh, and those of us who voted for her are to blame for uh, Trump beating Biden, uh, excuse me, Trump beating Clinton. <laughs> the reality is uh, Trump beat Clinton um, because, uh, you know, f more than anything else, because uh, uh, massive numbers of voters were uh, prevented from bo voting who were, you know, from those groups, uh, people of color, uh, poor people, uh, college students, uh, or young, very young adults uh, who, um, you know, uh, are more likely to prefer Democrats um, you know, were thrown off the registration list. And I talked about uh, last time about how um, you know, they went about this in 2016. Uh, what they did was they pretended that people who had the same first and last names in different states uh, were the same people. Um, and so they would throw somebody off the registration list claiming that they were registered in more than one state. And as it so happens, uh, the most common names, that, you know, they figured this out in their, in their Republican uh, election officials like Chris Kobach of uh, uh, Kansas, you know, figured out that, uh, you know, uh, people of color, particularly black and Hispanic people, are much more likely to have very common last names as well as uh, first names uh, than uh, white people are. Um, and you know, particularly black voters are much more likely to pick Democrats than Republicans when they vote. So this was a way of disenfranchising likely uh, Clinton voters in that uh, particular election. Um, but uh, you know, there's also other possible ways that things were rigged, as the uh, data suggest. Uh, so, there were, um, let me check here, um, 28 uh, states where uh, exit polls were done uh, in uh, the 2016 general election where, um, uh, and, and uh, then a national exit poll too. And so, you know, I did the same thing. 
you know, entered all the exit poll data for all 28 of those states and the uh, national exit poll data for both Clinton and Trump, uh, and then entered in uh, the actual results and computed the differences for uh, each candidate, statistically analyzed the results, and here's what you get. Um, so Clinton underperformed uh, what the exit polls said her performance would be by about 1%. And Trump overperformed uh, the expectation based on the exit polls by almost 2%. Um, you know, big number for F there means a highly statistically significant uh, difference between uh, you know, how Clinton did relative to the exit polls and how Trump did relative to the exit polls. Probability of less than 1 in a 1,000 that this difference uh, was just an accident um, and they really didn't differ in how they uh, you know, performed uh, compared to the polls. Um, so uh, big effect size there, not as big as for Biden versus Sanders as I showed you a few minutes ago, but still pretty big. Um, okay, so um, massive evidence there that uh, there's some fishy stuff that went on in the 2016 election. Um, not that I care all that much uh, that Trump beat Clinton. Clinton was terrible. I didn't vote for her, but uh, you know, uh, pretty clear that it wasn't a fair election. Uh, same thing with the Democratic primary. Uh, and again, as I said before, uh, the uh, Republican in the Republican primaries, the uh, exit polls uh, pretty closely matched the actual results. Not so in the Democratic primaries. Uh, so exit polls were done for uh, 25 of the 50 states uh, for the uh, 2016 Democratic primaries. So here's what we get if we statistically analyze the uh, <coughs> Clinton versus Sanders performance compared with the exit polls in the 2016 Democratic primaries. So, as you can see here down at the bottom, uh, number one there is Clinton, number two is Sanders. So, uh, Clinton overperformed the exit polls in terms of her uh, outcomes in those, I think it was 25 uh, states where they did exit polls by a bit over 2%, whereas Bernie Sanders underperformed at the exit polls by almost 2.7%. Uh, and there is no question that's a statistically significant difference. So again, you know the drill. A big number for F up there in the top row, uh, you know, number 32 is really big, indicates uh, there's a big effect here and the probability value P that that uh, difference between Clinton's performance compared to the exit polls and Sanders' performance compared to the exit polls uh, could have been that big uh, just purely by accident. is less than 0 .001, you know, less than 1 in 1,000 as you see there. And uh, the numbers on the right here, uh, sorry that one got cut off but I think it's about the same if not the same, uh, <coughs> 0.401 uh, is the uh, effect size, that indicates that 40% uh, of the variation in that variable that we're looking at here, uh, the discrepancy between uh, exit poll performance and actual vote count for each candidate across those uh, 28 states, 40% of the variation in that number is accounted for by this difference between how well Clinton did compared to the polls versus how well uh, Sanders did uh, compared to the exit polls. Uh, so uh, you know, there seems little question that something was rigged here. Well, what might have been rigged, you may ask? Well, uh, here's one possibility. This uh, graphic illustrates the uh, voting outcome in primary states where uh, you had uh, paper ballots or at least a, a paper trail for uh, ballots cast by a machine and uh, Sanders beat Clinton in those states. Um, 
in states without a uh, voting paper trail. In other words, uh, it was purely an electronic uh, voting machine, and they didn't like give voters a paper printout of who they voted for or um, you know, generate a paper trail uh, at all. Uh, Clinton beat Sanders by a whopping margin. Now, granted, uh, I, I don't know which states those are, so you know it could be that those are just states that uh, Clinton won anyway. But you know, again, going back to those exit polls, uh, you know, Clinton beat the exit polls by a sizable margin. Sanders underperformed the exit polls by a sizable margin. Uh, so. Uh, it seems like there's something fishy going on, uh, and you know, as <clears throat> I discussed earlier, uh, some of the fishy things that go on in U.S. elections uh, are not things that can necessarily be picked up by exit polls. Namely, you know, if they just prevent voters from voting altogether, like they can't even show up to the polls and vote or mail in a ballot or whatever, um, which happens to many, many voters. So, for example, uh, you know, approximately a million voters in the 2016 uh, general election between Trump and Clinton were just outright prevented from voting by having their uh, voter registration information removed. Uh, but, you know, there are other ways, you know, other tricks or shenanigans that Democrats and Republicans engage in to uh, skew the results that are picked up by exit polls. Uh, let me just read you an excerpt from this uh, book. Um, let me uh, get back on camera here. Uh, uh, this book that I was showing you earlier, a uh, passage about uh, the uh, Democrats rigging of the uh, 2016 primaries. Uh, the Dems, Dems use the playbook, meaning the playbook uh, developed by the Republicans for rigging elections uh, starting way back in 2000. Uh, the Clinton campaign seemed to utilize a strip and flip playbook by engaging in massive acts of disenfranchisement uh, in Brooklyn, Sanders' hometown, uh, where over uh, 125,000 Democratic voters were denied primary ballots due to voter purging. Confusing and contradictory party registration requirements in California blocked hundreds of thousands of voters from successfully voting for Sanders because they were independent or only sometimes registered as Democrats. These voters were issued provisional ballots that were never counted. Uh, so they voted, and they thought they voted, uh, in most cases, for Sanders. Uh, Poll suggested overwhelmingly those voters who switched from independent uh, were going to vote for Sanders, or, or you know, thought they had, or actually did. Um, these voters were issued provisional ballots that were never counted. Voting machine shortages, elimination of precincts, and long lines in Arizona and other states deterred voters on their primary election days. In Phoenix, voters in heavily Latino areas waited to vote for at least five hours to cast a ballot. Around 300,000 voters in Wisconsin were estimated to have been disenfranchised in the 2016 Democratic primary, according to the New York Times, uh, primarily by uh, Wisconsin's onerous uh, voter ID laws, where, for example, um, a, a college student can't use a uh, state-issued uh, college ID as a means of uh, identification. You know, they have to have a driver's license, and you know, so... I mean, there are other forms of ID, like a passport, um, but, uh, you know, if you don't have a car or, you know, you happen not to have any reason to get a passport or can't afford a passport, um, you know, you're, I mean, there's not that many other forms of ID besides those that are permissible, so you're shit out of luck. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Donald Trump made his way to the forefront of the Republican primary without an exit poll out of place. You know, they were all accurate. Meanwhile, the Democratic primary saw all targeted voter suppression, re registration tampering, illegal voter purges, you know, the aforementioned exit poll discrepancies that we just statistically analyzed, voting machine tampering, and lack of security, as reported in the Election Justice USA report entitled Democracy Lost, a report on the fatally flawed 2016 uh, Democratic primaries. 
The report stated that all of these state areas of fraud served to benefit Hillary Clinton's campaign, sequestering 184 delegates to Hillary that should have been rightfully given to Sanders and should have awarded him the Democratic Party presidential nomination. And similarly, uh, it's pretty clear when you look at those discrepancies from the exit polls in the 2020 primaries that even more massively uh, you know, were in Biden's uh, favor versus Sanders. Uh, you know, some uh, shenanigans went on there too. So, uh, you know, all in all, uh, I guess you can say this about our election systems system. You know, both parties cheat. Um, they don't necessarily cheat in the uh, exact same ways or for the uh, exact same reasons. Um, so the pattern seems to be that uh, Republicans don't really rig anything in the primaries because you know, they're pretty much all corporate candidates and you know, no dominant faction in the Republican Party has an ideology that favors uh, you one particular major candidate over others, generally speaking. Um, you know, the Democratic uh, primaries, at least in 2016 and 2020, where there was an insurgent candidate, namely Bernie Sanders, with enough popularity that he could have won and you know, should have won on both occasions. Um, if you look at all the data, uh, they you know, went out of their way to make sure that Bernie Sanders would not win the nomination. Uh, however, in the general elections, there's been a consistent pattern. Uh, dating back at least to the 2000, uh, where uh, Republicans have engaged in voter suppression, uh, rigging of uh, voting machines, and uh, other tactics to um, you know, uh, give their candidate an enhanced chance of winning. And you know, they actually pulled off stealing the election in 2000, 2000 2004, and 2016. And there's no doubt, if you look at the data, that they tried to do so in the other elections, uh, 2008, 2012, and 2020, but uh, their candidates simply didn't have the uh, popularity to pull it off. Uh, now, you know, that's not to say that Democrats don't ever cheat in general elections. There's pretty solid evidence that... Um, the Chicago area was rigged in favor of John Kennedy in the 1960 presidential election, and uh, that was the decisive factor in him uh, beating Richard Nixon in 1960. And you know, there may yet emerge evidence of uh, Democratic Party shenanigans in other elections, and certainly they've done things to uh, prevent third parties from uh, becoming more popular, so they keep them out of debates, um, you know, just like they keep uh, try to keep progressive uh, Democratic candidates uh, who don't have a huge following out of debates. Um, they knock uh, Green Party or other uh, third party candidates off the ballots uh, uh, using very dubious, if not outright, illegal tactics. Um, and, you know, we can't say that either of these parties <laughs> are, are not trying to uh, cheat the system at, at some point or another. But, you know, the Democrats care much more about making sure that they get their corporate candidate as a nominee than they do about who wins the general election. Uh, you know, the Republicans, for whatever reason, maybe it's racism, uh, you know, who knows, uh, they try to uh, you know, rig things in favor of their candidates uh, in the uh, general elections. Um, so, you know, just in conclusion, you know, we really need to uh, <coughs> just recognize that uh, American elections are thoroughly corrupt and uh, both major parties, the Republicans and Democrats, uh, play a role in making it that way. Uh, but at the same time, we need to take an empirical approach and not simply assume, well, if the Republican Party cheated in election X, that must mean they also cheated in election Y. Or if the Democratic Party cheated in election X, that must mean that they also cheated in election Y. You know, we have to look at the evidence and make up our own mind. Um, okay, so that's all for today's episode. Oh, uh, I don't know if you noticed, uh, 
you know, I uh, changed shirts here. Um, you know, what happened was that uh, there was a part of the video that got messed up and I'm actually splicing <laughs> this new segment which I made the following day into it. Uh, anyway, um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and share the video. Alright, see you next time.